Hello, I am your Everyday Average Jonathan. Join me this week while I turn this and this into this, what can be considered an interpretation of mine on Cupid's arrow. Hello, I am your everyday average Jonathan. I'm an ordinary guy with ordinary tools making extraordinary items. I'm a self-taught craftsman. I'm an amateur blacksmith and a novice woodworker. I have no professional training in your basic assortment of tools that I've cobbled together over the years. The projects that I take on each week tend to be whimsical in nature, fantastical, echoing times of a forgotten yore, perhaps. Projects like weapons and armor, structures, furniture, novelty items, and even practical things that I actually might use. I show you my process, I show you my perspective, I don't edit out any of my mistakes, I don't edit out any of my aha moments. My goal each week is to simply demonstrate that anyone with a lot of hard-won knowledge, a lot of curiosity, drive, ambition, can take on projects and tasks and accomplish them that we might have thought were out of reach or too difficult or too outlandish even. This week is a very interesting project for me, only in that it will be the largest cast item that I've ever made. Cast meaning molten metal that I've ever poured into a form and created something with. I think it's gonna be a fast project. I just have to make sure I have enough bronze. But many, many years ago, I was on the phone with my medical provider at the time, and this lady on the phone was asking me all sorts of questions regarding my medical history. She was asking if I was on the standard questions like, are you on any medications? What, what surgeries have you had? And then she asked the question, have you broken anything? But at the time, I thought it was hysterical, and I said to her, I have never broken anything unless you count a broken heart. I thought that was really funny, but this lady on the phone, her response was, Oh, and those are the worst kind to break. I think she even might have asked me more questions about it and tried to sort of mother me or nurture me at the time. But with that sort of story in mind, what we're going to make today is going to be Cupid's arrow, my interpretation of Cupid's arrow. No, I don't suffer from a broken heart. But this particular Cupid's arrow that we're going to make might tell some tales of somebody that may have a broken heart or at least a hardened heart. Without further ado, no more talk. Let's get to the shop and get started. I recently created as one of my projects the iconic crown of thorns and while I thought that was an iconic indelible image something that we all are very familiar with it comes to my realization that the the figure and the the lore of Cupid is probably something that is is as famous perhaps in our culture as something like the crown of thorns Cupid is a Roman deity he is the god of love he is often portrayed as this cherub like little baby-like figure that has wings, flies around with a bow and arrow. Although I do think that the cherub-like quality to Cupid probably came later in maybe in Renaissance art even. Cupid is the son of Venus and either Vulcan or Venus and the god Mars, also Roman deities. Mars is the god of war, Venus also the goddess of love. And for those of us coming from Greek countries or Greek-speaking countries, the counterpart to Cupid would be Eros, and Eros is the son of Aphrodite and the son of Ares. Again, we all recognize the symbology of this particular deity, it, he, flying around with little cherub-like wings or running around amok, causing mischief, which Cupid was known to do, sometimes shooting his golden arrows into to couples or to people, to partners that may or may not like each other, just to see them fall in love with one each other. One of the neat things about that I learned while doing this research is a concept called Cupid's bow, and that is this image that you see here of the upper portion of a lip, a recurve bow, and they call that, that portion of the upper lip Cupid's bow. I did not know that. I think that's pretty cool. These are the only doodles, the only sketches I made of what I was going to actually put together, and then the rest was, it was just very easy to lay out. It was very simple. It didn't really need any specific measurements. I chose 16 inches uh, just because it just seemed like a great, a great round number to me. I have my wood stack, my wood pile, and I just ended up using this really, really flimsy piece of pine. I was actually a little bit nervous in cutting this out and then putting any sort of pressure on it because pine can just snap so easily. Uh, but the bandsaw, I was going to use my scroll saw. The bandsaw did everything I needed it to do, so I didn't need to use my scroll saw after all. And then ye old spindle sander, as some of you watch my videos know, I can't stand this thing. It doesn't do the job at all. And honestly, I don't know if it did anything on this teeny flimsy piece of, of, of pine. It's just not a powerful machine whatsoever. 
You know, fletching and veins on on, a, on on an arrow, the the guided, the feathered part, they have a 3D element to them. They don't just stand true and, and, and proud with the actual arrow shaft, so I wanted to give them a little bit more of a 3D dimension. I was going to bevel off the, uh, round off the edges of this so that this the shaft of the arrow had was rounded. I kind of just wasted my time on that because after pulling it out of the, with the clay, which you'll see here in a second, it, it needed a lot of rounding, a lot of sanding anyhow. All right, this is my casting clay. It's something I buy off of Amazon. I was gonna need to use pretty much all of it for this. It, it does burn. So when, once you've cast molten metal into this, that clay actually does burn and then the burned blackened bits uh, are not usable. So you have to remove them to use the clay continually. But I'll get a lot of uses out of this. Now these brass pipes, I don't even know where I got them, probably from Home Depot. That's my stock for making bronze, for making brass. I put copper in it, I put a little bit of lead in there, and I put a lot of brass into the kiln that I have down here, as you can see. As I've said in some of my other videos, this kiln takes so long, so long. I mean, it's a lot of heat mass in there, I understand, but it just takes an extremely long time for my patience level. And then the borax that you saw me pouring in there, that's a flux. It basically helps remove impurities. It brings them out into their own uh, sticky substance that you can scoop out. And that I think is the technical term, the sticky substance that you can pull out of your, of your amalgamation. As I often say, it, I love this part when you come to actually pour in a mold, pour the molten the molten bronze into a mold. It's pretty cool looking. I, I really dig how this, this turns out. I really got the fletching though on the end wrong, and I don't know how. I, it looked right to me. And then as you will see, I had to pivot a little bit with how that fletching is going to look. So it's nice when you first start pulling this out to be really, really careful. You know, you gotta make sure that when it, it is, oh, or you can just drop it like that. There's just going to be a lot of cleanup work, a lot of, of, of profiling, grading, sanding. Uh, I'm going to get this thing nice and cool, as you see here, before I do any of that. But then it's just time to peel off the, the bits and the bobs and the little parts that did not make uh, the actual cut. Ha! Get it? Make the cut? That really wasn't that good of a, of a pun. Forgive me. And as you can see here, one of those veins didn't actually turn out the right way. It, it needed, and I could have redone it, I just decided not to and, and make it into the story. Every now and then you gotta be careful. Oh, you, knocking over your camera is never a good idea. Thankfully I have a GoPro for all of my videos, so it, doesn't, it seems to be extremely uh, durable. Now I'm just cutting in individual feather strands into this, and it really did turn out good. I figure a lot of people know this little technique to twisting wire and making it uniform and making it look kind of interesting, but I wrapped it around the, 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 the arrow portion, stick the two wires, the two ends of the wires into the drill, get them nice and tight, and then just go ahead and start to run the drill. Not very fast. It does reduce the size quite a bit, so allow for that. But what I did here is just make a little bit of a steel hanger. I don't really like the way the steel hanger looks. I did want to weld that final piece end together. I don't really like the way it looks, but it, it seems to sort of work, for, at least for the time being. And here it is, the final look, the final thought. I love it. I really think it's kind of cute and interesting with the, with the, the, the shattered head to it uh, as if it hit something hard and the broken veins uh, not, not quite there as if it's been left to, to rot for a while. I dig it. Again, I'm not certain I'm going to leave that wire on it for its hanging, but we'll get there. Cupid, draw back your bow and let your arrow go straight to my lover's heart for me. Nobody but me. Well, thank you for joining me for that cute, quick little build. I must admit in a sappy, silly sort of way, I am touched by the notion of what it is that we built this week. The question that it asks of what would it take, what type of person, what type of, what type of experiences a person would have to have, unfortunately, to have a heart that is so hardened that even Cupid couldn't penetrate it with his arrow. I feel like there's some sort of fable or short story in that just waiting to be written by somebody much, much better at writing than I am. There really aren't any takeaways. There's just a few mistakes that I made. One is for some reason how I poured that, uh, that bronze did not make it completely to the, the fletching of the arrow, the arrow veins. I'm not really certain because I really thought I did get that right, but I think this is just going to end up a piece of wall decor. I'm not, not going to put any sort of label or any sort of wording to it that would say Cupid's arrow dented against a hardened heart or anything like that. But that's it for me this week. If you like projects like this that are interesting, fantastical, whimsical, or just plain artistic oddities, please check out my channel for more projects like this. 
join me next week. I will begin building a set of Christmas gifts, projects for people in my family, people that are important to me. And I will be trying a few things that I've never tried before, i.e. carving into wood with chisels and making scrolling. We'll see how that goes. Until then, God bless. Thank you for joining me.